A Senate committee is recommending Chinese messaging app WeChat be banned on government devices. Banning the popular social media apps TikTok and WeChat. Ban the app on national security grounds. Tencent grew to be one of the most important tech companies in China, creating WeChat, used by an estimated 90% of citizens regularly. But the story behind its success was less than straightforward. A shy, unremarkable child transformed himself into one of the most powerful figures in China. Along the way, this businessman has become the picture boy of Chinese tech expansion, and a marked man maneuvering his way through political minefields, negotiating with oppressive governments, and getting caught in between trade wars. This is the story of the man behind Tencent, Ma Hua Tang. Chapter 1. The Quiet Kid Born in Xiaoyang, Guangdong, Ma Hua Tung's father was employed as a port manager in Shenzhen, which would soon become the base for Ma's global empire. In his schooling years, Ma was a quiet, well-behaved and largely unnoticed boy, though behind his reservation was a brilliant mind, which drew him towards complicated technical subjects. While still an intern at the age of 22, Ma already sold his first app. He moved quickly through the ranks, with his superiors recognizing his proficiency. But Ma couldn't resist beginning his projects. He soon launched a chat forum named PonySoft.net, where his later nickname of Pony would originate from. Ma studied computer science and engineering at Shenzhen University, giving him the grounding for a career in technology. After graduating from university, Ma earned a job at China Motion Telecom Development as a software lead. Specializing in paper software and later internet calling services, Ma was fast becoming well-versed in the industry, and he earned a job at ICQ in 1996, which was the first internet instant messaging service, bought two years later by AOL. But having learned the trade secrets from ICQ, Ma saw the huge market opportunity for a similar service in China, earning a meager salary of $176 a month, which would be around $360 today. Ma knew that he had what it took to create a sprawling online empire, and so together with a group of former classmates from Shenzhen University, he founded Tencent in 1998. Tencent, or Tengzheng in Chinese, is based on Huatong, a name that means galloping fast information. With Ma's experience and collaboration with other tech workers, the group was able to attract investment from venture capitalists. And within just one year, OICQ was released, offering the same services as ICQ. Initially, the service took some time to catch on. In the early days of the platform, Ma himself would trawl chat rooms posing as a girl to fill up spaces and make them more interesting. In fact, he even met his future wife in one of these chat rooms. Eventually, his hours of behind-the-scenes work, populating chat rooms, and building up the service would pay off. Chapter 2. Growing Pains Over the first 12 months, OICQ became a huge hit, earning over 1 million users. With users in the growing internet cafe culture using it to communicate before the rise of personal computers, but since the service was open and free, Tencent quickly ran into the issues of keeping up with operational costs. Ma knew that in the long run, OICQ would prove to be successful, but in the meantime, there were a host of problems. Tencent was hit with an arbitration suit from AOL, who had recently bought ICQ and now wanted OICQ renamed. When Tencent lost the case, they were forced to rename their messaging service QQ. And it wasn't their only problem. The firm desperately needed funding, and much of that was found through agreements with telecom providers, who were happy to integrate instant messaging services, especially because it could now be used with mobile devices, which were becoming more and more popular. After some major deals, around 80% of Tencent's income was coming from these telecom operators. QQ may have been a big hit, but it was nothing compared to the titanic service that Tencent would be just a few years later, or the expansions that Ma had in mind. Despite there being relatively few online opportunities in China at the turn of the 21st century, Ma Huatang marked Tencent as an internet business with huge potential. The gap in the market for social media networks in the country gave the company a prime position. 
And in 2003, Tencent began expanding its business to include a portal as well as several online games. The company had captured almost three quarters of the market and Ma listed Tencent on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange with the IPO raising $200 million, or $330 million today. This skyrocketed Ma into China's business elite. But he wasn't done there. Investments in companies like Tesla and Snapchat diversified Tencent's portfolio, as well as JD.com, which is Alibaba's main competitor, largely thanks to a 15% ownership stake bought by Tencent. In their quest for online dominance, Tencent experimented with online games, but it wasn't until 2010 that their most famous app would be developed, launched under the name Weixin. It was an application designed for mass communication and group chat and to combine the features of other online marketplaces. The rollout was bumpy, with early users frustrated by a lack of features and slow development. But in 2011, when a walkie-talkie feature was incorporated, it quickly became one of the biggest platforms in the country, attracting over 100 million users, at which point it was rebranded to a more international audience. The new name? WeChat. Chapter 3 a super app is born. Between 2011 and 2015, Tencent's WeChat project was given significant government subsidies, helping it to integrate financial services and e-commerce capability. It was key to WeChat moving beyond simply a messaging platform into what has been called a super app, available on Android and iOS, and originally extended to BlackBerry, Windows, and Symbian, and by 2013, Tencent had a market cap of $100 billion. Analysts reported that it had a great long stock to build on the rapidly expanding mobile internet business. In an attempt to gain global supremacy, Tencent used Lionel Messi in advertisements for WeChat, which appeared in Spanish and Mandarin. It was an indication of how much free cash Tencent had to spend, as well as their ambitious global targets. Two years later, alongside WeChat, Tencent's social networking site Qzone had over 670 million monthly active users, meaning that it was the third largest social media network on the planet, trailing only Facebook and YouTube. For years, chat services like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger have envied WeChat's dominance and universality. After Elon Musk bought Twitter, he signaled his intentions to move towards an everything app in the style of WeChat. There are few online areas that Tencent has been reluctant to enter, even committing $3 billion to a YouTube-like application, which is yet to take off. WeChat has developed a user-friendly interface that combines authentication, payment, and other features into one simple account. And on top of this system, WeChat has become an ecosystem for many programs, businesses and startups making up a significant part of China's online economy. Official accounts for entities like hospitals, visa services, and credit companies can send their feed directly to subscribers. In 2015, Tencent opened WeBank, which was the first online-only bank in the country. Just two years later, Tencent hit a huge milestone overtaking Facebook to break into the top five biggest companies in the world. And it made a bold early move into an emerging market. Chapter 4. Video Games Since Tencent's inception, Ma Huatung hasn't been afraid to make ambitious investments. Online games became part of the company's portfolio in the early 2000s, and by 2011, it owned over 92% of Riot Games, which produces League of Legends, one of the biggest esports games, with the 2020 World Championships garnering 45 million concurrent viewers, outperforming the NBA. Tencent now holds a 40% stake in Epic Games, as well as shares in Ubisoft, Kraft, Marvel Incorporated, and Activision Blizzard, which together produce some of the most successful games in the world, like Fortnite, PUBG, and World of Warcraft. Additionally, it owns Funcom, Turtle Rock, and a handful of other games companies, making it the biggest video game publisher on the planet. And Tencent isn't stopping there. It plans to take over other video game creators, especially in Europe, 
expanding its portfolio to become increasingly overseas, especially as China's clampdowns on the tech industry threaten Tencent's domestic business. Tencent follows other huge players moving into the industry. For instance, Saudi Arabia's state investment fund planning to pump over $37 billion into gaming and Microsoft's huge acquisition of Activision Blizzard for a whopping $68.7 billion. Video games now make up 32% of Tencent's profits, and it serves as a welcomed international expansion beyond Chinese borders, where the company is constantly under fire either by domestic or foreign adversaries. Part 4. Becoming a Global Target Tencent has been anything but neutral in the realm of politics. Although subject to strict crackdowns put in place by the legislators, especially starting in 2018. The company has been more of a target for international regulators and businesses, especially for its flagship product, WeChat. Internally, WeChat discourages foreign accounts from using the platform through Chinese authorities, but their actions go much further than that. Tencent has been long accused of working closely with the Chinese government and compromising international security. Numerous reports have found extensive censorship largely in response to Chinese official policy positions, banning restricted keywords, but the company has maintained that these are largely the result of technical glitches. During local elections in Hong Kong, pro-democratic messages were censored, and political accounts were disabled. In 2016, Amnesty International report gave a score of zero for protecting user data, pointing to its lack of end-to-end -end encryption, which is an industry standard for privacy. For these reasons, WeChat has been described as China's Trojan horse. In 2017, the Russian government banned WeChat because of a refusal to comply with Russian communication guidelines, which cited national security concerns. Three years later, in 2020, the Indian government enforced a ban too, together with almost 60 other Chinese apps, directly in response to India and China's territorial disputes. And in the same year, then-President Donald Trump sought to ban WeChat but was blocked by the United States District Court in California. Trump was especially concerned with Chinese apps like TikTok and WeChat and the fact that China's 2017 national intelligence law allowed for covert operation with Chinese intelligence agencies. Tencent's tensions with the US government and regulators have in many ways mirrored the tensions between America and China. The company, along with other Chinese tech companies, has been banned from US auditors inspecting it. The Australian government found that TikTok data of Australian users had been accessed in China, leading to Canberra banning the use of the app on government devices. It has been reported that over 7,000 members of the Chinese Communist Party not only work at WeChat, but have leadership positions, which make up more than one-fifth of the company's entire workforce. That doesn't mean that there are no tensions between Tencent and the Chinese government, though. Tencent has now grown into the international tech powerhouse, along with sweeping changes, clampdowns on technology companies, and the breaking up of perceived monopolies. China gave Tencent a clear show of force in the past by disrupting services or delaying messages. Overall, though, China is happy with its homegrown success story. Chapter 5 Today in 2021, Tencent had a revenue of 560 billion RMB, equal to $77 billion. And this year, even with a drop in market cap to $400 billion, Tencent remains the 20th most valuable company in the world. WeChat has grown from a platform for communication to one for business, traveling, making medical appointments, and managing bank accounts. China has had something to say about Tencent's success, though. The government told Tencent to move its focus away from excessive profits and to help limit young children from playing video games. China has banned users under the age of 18 from playing video games on weekdays, as well as limiting weekend time to three hours in response to growing concerns about the dangers of video game addiction, screen time, and the lack of socialization. Tencent should be worried. China has shown in the past that it is not afraid to break up giant tech companies and redistribute the wealth. Just this year, China hit Tencent and Ant Group, another tech giant, with fines totaling over $1 billion. China is still committed to growing its domestic tech industry to eclipse that of the United States, but wants to keep close control of its tech giants and their owners. 
President Xi Jinping has said that he wants to adjust excessive incomes of the country's wealthy business elite in line with its policy of common prosperity. Ma Huatung now goes by the English nickname Pony, and unlike the unspoken and erratic Alibaba founder Jack Ma, Pony Ma is discreet, reclusive, and understated. Today, he has a net worth of over $34.5 billion, making him one of the richest in China. Ma still serves as the chief executive officer of Tencent, with time ranking him in the group of the world's most influential people three years in the past decade and a half. Tencent has grown from a failed college dorm room business into arguably the most important in China. Under Pony Ma's leadership, the company is also moving into areas like cloud computing, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and autonomous vehicles, seeking to stay on top of the tech world.